obviously happy with the victory, but they felt like the, the Scottish really tested them at times. So good work from the Scotland side. They've been really impressive in the mixed open division so far in the match. So Hong Kong back on the attack here. Scores a level. One touchdown apiece. They do a really good job. The team from Hong Kong to score on their opening raid down this end of the field. And we'll see if they can get it. Number two on the board. They split. They look to go into that link hole. But the ball goes down to ground. And France now, they're progressing out of their end of the field. They're driving up the sideline nicely. They'll make some changes here at the same time. So let's see how they flow out of their interchange box. And Adam Collins joins me now on the commentary box for this match. Adam, it's uh, good to see you back in the commentary box. Yeah, great to be back in with you, Scotty. Uh, beautiful day here in uh, Putrajaya at the moment. Bit of cloud cover, so hopefully we don't see the heat conditions we saw yesterday. But these teams that kick off early in the morning, they're very thankful for these uh, early round matches. There's not many times you go to a tournament and you're happy to be playing at 8 o'clock, but this would be one of those rare occasions. Yeah, that's absolutely true. We uh, were speaking about it earlier. You don't go to many touch tournaments where you pray for rain. But we've had prayers for rain. We've had thanks for uh, early matches. This is some tournament. So Hong Kong uh, turning the ball over. France are back on the attack now. They look to shift the ball. They switch back in, drive in nicely here, French. There's some nice players who set up here for the French. Good speed too, attacking the line. But the defence on that occasion stays strong. The France regroup. So attacking the line out, nice drive in, good setup. We come back to the open side, long cut out pass attempted, but doesn't make the distance. Had some players in space there, but unfortunately the ball goes to ground, so the attacking opportunity goes to waste. So we see Hong Kong now work their way off their scoreline. So good transition play here, some nice speed from the Hong Kong players as well. Up just near the halfway line. So they've made good coverage in only a few touches. A nice dump. A couple of touches remaining. Here we go, the final touch. Acting half has been caught. But once again, great transition from the Hong Kong team to go all the way. But now we see a penalty awarded to France. I'm not quite sure what that was for. Our commentary position is a little distance away from the field, so we are commentating a little bit blind. We'll do our best to identify individual players for you. As we see France on the attack. Another penalty offside given this time. So a great opportunity here. A tap on the halfway line for the French team. We work our way up into attacking position. The gentleman there that just rolled the ball seems to make uh, a lot of the play for the French. Good speed. I see the three men working heavily in the middle. The features of the mixed open play where the three men will set themselves up in the middle, but it's often the, uh, the dominant female players that can make a difference in this game. You see the acting half goes across the line this occasion, looks for the support, finds one this time. So that was a try for Astrid Velaire from France. So they claim the lead with that touchdown. Really worked well there. A couple of penalties to get themselves up the field. But a nice finish to a very positive movement for the French team. Yeah, they take the lead back the French, which is a good effort to get themselves back in the match. It was Hong Kong who got the opening touchdown of the match. And the French got the second and now they've got the third. So back-to-back -back touchdowns here for the French side. It's been a good game so far, Scotty. The uh, good speed from both teams, and that is uh, something you're seeing. Is, oh, that was a beautifully set up touchdown. So a nice comeback from the Hong Kong team. 
just demonstrating there how much it means. But the speed of the play is very different in the morning than it is in the afternoon. That was outstanding, that touchdown. It's just uh, got a little bit excited in the commentary box as that was unfolding. There was just a nice connection of, of passing as well. But the speed in which the Hong Kong side are driving into the line is really impressive at the moment. It's causing issues for the French. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's been a feature of the mixed open play right throughout the tournament. So it's very hotly contested. We see the winger come in, makes a squeeze play, has to get back in time. She doesn't do so, but the ball went astray anyway. So nice pressure from the Hong Kong defence on that occasion. Forced the long pass to be thrown. And the French player didn't have the strength to get it all the way out there in time. Yeah, it was Yuan. Did a really good job to scramble or come in and put the pressure on to make the touch. Knew she had to cover a corner and get back out to the wing. If they managed to connect the pass up there a little bit more crispy, they might have been in trouble, but they still shut the play down. That's a good result Hong Kong needed. Yeah, Mario Thipene. Unable to get across the line. That was nice pressure from Se Kwan Yuan. Yeah, they've just turned it over themselves, Hong Kong. And uh, it was at the uh, start of the broadcast, I was just making mention of uh, how many highlighted games we have on the card for today. It's We've got the finals this afternoon, more gold medal matches, but it's actually some of the round games that I've got a keen eye on because there's quite a few teams that are fighting for either a, a, a fourth position or even some are shooting for third and just really trying to lock down a, a semi-final spot. Yeah, a lot of uh, divisions here, 11 divisions in total, so there's plenty of hotly contested matches remaining. The men's and women's open is tight for that uh, semi-final positions. No quarterfinals at this tournament, so it is all to play for. All or nothing in the men's and women's opens. As we see another try this time for France, that one, Anthony Cougan. So, we're tied up once again, Scotty. Yeah, Hong Kong get us back underway. <laughs> Both teams looking dangerous with the football at the moment. It might come down to a defensive game. Whoever might be able to, to stem the bleeding might be able to get the ascendancy because both teams can get touchdowns at will. Oh, sloppy play there, just taking the foot off the pedal, a little bit too relaxed. You can't nap in touch football. It could be that split-second play that costs, as we saw yesterday in some of our gold medal matches. All it took was that momentary lapse, and that's enough for the opposition to get one on you, and that's all it takes. One extra try, and you can be the champion. I've turned the ball over here. The French side coming out of their end of the field. So Hong Kong have really good field position here and they'll be trying to make the French team pay for that mistake that they made. Yeah, we had really entertaining gold medal matches yesterday afternoon. It was the Kiwis actually getting the better of the Aussies in two out of the three. Um, really entertaining matches and there's going to be plenty more this afternoon with men's 45s, men's 35s and the women's 27s gold medal matches. Yeah, looking forward to those. But this uh, Hong Kong team really putting it on here. Applying plenty of pressure. I saw some great footwork out there. I'd love to be able to identify the player for you. But as I said, unfortunately, we're a little bit too far away to read the numbers at the moment. But uh, yeah, there was one interesting player to watch there for the Hong Kong team. Keep my eye on him. And uh, if I can let you know his name, he's a bit of a hot stepper. So one to watch close to the line. Yeah, you got hands in on the football there. Hong Kong, so it's six more touches to the French. They managed to get points when they were down this end of the field on their last attacking rate. See if they can produce the same again. They go the quick roll ball. Nice little quick. He's got on the outside here. Might be a penalty coming. Uh, offside play from Hong Kong. And I think the French player is actually uh, trying to get the referee to ask the Hong Kong player. Well, he's just gone the dummy and step himself, so he was looking like uh, he was Asking the question there, is that Rosenthal yeah. to to the referee on the previous play? He, I think he was asking whether the uh, Hong Kong player actually made the touch. They get the penalty, he taps it, throws the dummy, he goes bang, bang, and I'll get one anyway. Yeah, Quinton Rosenthal, beautiful footwork there. Just snapped him off the right foot 
and a nice touchdown for the for the French team. So they're back in front. And uh, that's the footwork that we're looking for close to the line. If you have that, that is a pretty big weapon to bring with you. Yeah, so Hong Kong uh, are chasing the French side now. Nice sweet play. They come back against the grain. They go left to right. Beautiful ball. Can they get down in the corner? No, they can't. Good scramble. Defence there. Vallette coming across in cover defence. And they'll just turn the ball over here on the right-hand side. So, well done there from the French in defence. Yeah, we saw that nice long ball thrown by the Hong Kong team. And that's the difference in some of these teams. The ability to get the ball to ground quickly in that scoring opportunity. It was great athleticism from the young lady on the wing for the Hong Kong team. Hoi Lam Tso. But unfortunately not able to get across the stripe in time. So, but enterprising play. Let's see uh, if they can... Uh, Hold the French team out here as we see a switch of play. Man on woman then. She's claiming the touch. The referee was on the spot. Calls the touch. So another opportunity gone for France, but they'll load up once again. Here's the man with the ball now who's been dangerous every time he's been on the paddock. A lot of play seems to emanate around him, but that time, great defence. Shuts that one down. Yeah, good response from Hong Kong as well. They had them on the back foot. This is good rucking it up through the middle of the field from Hong Kong. So they're trying to get back into another attacking position. The referee calls a penalty there, a hard touch. So great attacking opportunity here for the Hong Kong team. Full set of six, setting up 15 to 20 metres out from the French line. So good opportunity. Trying to draw the defenders up off the line here. Gets the man that he wanted out of the line. The dive over. Very well set up play. Just the slow down of play there to draw the defenders up. They pick the right man. Quick dump. Splits to the left. Popped up off the ground and a dive over. We've seen that play. And we've talked about a lot of these teams running similar plays. But it's about the ability of the individual to get the ball to the ground as quickly as possible. Yeah, that's where they've looked most dangerous, where they get nice roll ball, but they're actually giving the, the football straight from the deck. They've got speed in their side, the Hong Kong team, so they're utilising it nicely. They're not really throwing those big, long bombs, which we've seen from quite a few of the teams throughout this tournament. Nice quick passing off the deck, and they're getting value from it. Yeah, and it was that man I was talking about earlier, that number 10, the player I was trying to identify, he was around the play there, Ka Kitten. So he was working hard off the ball, and was good enough to get the ball from the deck straight into the player's hands who was able to dive over and score. So nice setup and a great finish for the Hong Kong team as they go on the attack once again. Close to the line, the scooping goes. Throws a little short pass, but gets it knocked down in flight. So six more touches. Another good opportunity here for the Hong Kong team. We see them bring the ball back into play now. So again, that slow down of play, trying to draw that right defender off the line. Splits hard. This time the shutdown comes in. So nice defence from the French team there. But the referee finds another infringement for offside on that occasion. But because the player that came in and jammed was onside, we didn't have the play through touchdown scored. Oh, wow. That was beautiful individual footwork there again. Wow, they've got some ability, this Hong Kong team. The footwork and the speed is really causing issues from France. That one's going on the highlight reel. And we often talk about the strength and the dominance of Australia and New Zealand in these divisions. However, we're seeing some fantastic play from a lot of the fringe nations making this a very tight division. And that's exactly what we're talking about. The Hong Kong team really working hard. Some great development in Asia and Hong Kong the likes of teams like Hong Kong have been right at the forefront of that development. So it's fantastic to see the great skills on display here from Hong Kong and France in this mixed open division. We see the French this time back on the attack. That one just getting away a little bit too hard, the pass there from number 14, Damien Alexandra. So Hong Kong with another opportunity. They have to go the length, but they have shown that they can do that. So let's see what they have up their sleeve this time around. Yeah, they come towards their substitution box there. Back in front, the team 
from Hong Kong. It's 5-4 on the scoreboard in this mixed open match. Nice running into the line here again. There's a bit of collision in between the ruck. The referee says play on. They're coming back out to the right-hand side, but they turn the ball over. Six touch, and the French back with the football. Yeah, a couple of plays in that one, Scotty, that looked a bit clunky. And uh, we'll see how they go here in defence as we see a turnover. So that could be costly for France. We've seen... No, but hang on. Another turnover. So an incorrect recommencement of play there from the Hong Kong team. And the referee has awarded a penalty this time. So a bit of confusion, but both teams have regrouped. And uh, we have the French team back on the attack. Oh, it's looking very clunky out there, isn't it? Both teams, the clunk factor on both sides is going through the roof. But France hold on to the football now. They drive into the line. This is better from France. Oh, and again... The outside defence has been perfect there from Yuan. I've jinxed it. <laughs> I thought she made the touch. She, could have, she must have been offside. She must have been offside there, Scott, because she she had clearly affected a touch. But the referees are on it on the spot. We have talked about the distance between us and the field from our commentary position. But that one looked like a touch was made before the ball was down. But the referees are the sole judge of fact, so we shall not question their decisions. Back level now. Yes, five touchdowns apiece between Hong Kong and France. This is exactly how we thought that the match was going to go. Both teams are hovering around that fourth and fifth position on the ladder. Similar stats in terms of wins and losses. So this is going to be a really tight match to the end. Look at this footwork again from Hong Kong. It's electric. And another penalty too, so six more opportunities for the French team. Uh, sorry, the Hong Kong team, and they have been exciting. There's a long ball this time out of the winger. That one goes astray. So another opportunity begging for the Hong Kong team. They have been exciting. I'm, I'm loving this game, Scotty. Yeah, this is great. It's a great way to start for us here in the mixed open. As we said, teams are really going to be... And going hammer and tong, then it's a uh, it's a great credit to these teams. This is the uh, ninth or tenth match for them for the tournament, and they're still uh, bringing the heat on the fifth day of the uh, World Cup. Bringing the heat in Putrajaya. That's what it's all about. We see the French on the attack, but great defence there from the number three, Carl Lock Lamb for the Hong Kong team. Shuts it down, but another penalty. There's a hooter in the background, so the French have one opportunity here. Tries for the step, the intercept attempt goes to ground, so no damage done. And that is the end of the first half here in the mixed opens division with France and Hong Kong. We look forward to bringing you all the action of the second half. Gracias. 
renvoyer l'eau. Au milieu, ça saute comme, euh, comme un livre, voilà, dès qu'il y a du mouvement. Pourquoi ça ne s'ouvre pas Parce que c'est tout, tout serré. On est trop serré pour prendre les touchés. Par contre, au moment où on prend le toucher, il y a un demi qui soit déjà là et qu'on propose des choses. Okay La défense, c'est très bien, il suffit juste de parler, il n'y a pas de danger. D'accord Le peu de danger qu'on a, c'est des steps, et ben on, se, on se resserre un peu plus. Mais pas ces arrêts-là. Donc on peut se permettre de se resserrer. Mais Elia, vous continuez le boulot, vous faites ça. Allez, 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 Welcome back to the Field 6 action, the mixed open match here between France and Hong Kong. It is locked up at five touchdowns apiece between the two sides. It's a fantastic opening half between the two teams. And two contrasting styles. A real lot of flair, speed, agility and attack from Hong Kong and France. More of a level-headed, structured type team. So it's been a um, really entertaining match so far. It'll be Hong Kong, though, that'll have first attack here at the French line. They're just drawing the defender up, trying to single one out. Gets the ball away. He needs need to jam in between there. Takes that man out of the play. Short pass attempted. But no hole in the defensive line there. So a nice coverage from the French defence. The player just ordered back on side there. The number seven, you saw him retreat out of the line, being ordered away by the referee. So there's a hot stepper for the Hong Kong team. Six touches, so the French defence holds strong in the first set after the Huda, which is often danger time. So well done to the French. Yeah, perfect start. That's exactly how they would have wanted to start the second half, France. They have to do their best to try and stem this Hong Kong attack. And it is the French side who are now with the football and they're looking to get another point. They have a little wraparound play, but they come back into the middle. They're still driving into the line. Okay, here, France. Now they're going to break into the in-goal area. Can they find support? And the ball just goes to ground, but oh, they might get six more touches here and more pressure on the Hong Kong team. It's a nice pressure there from the number 12 for France, Quinton Rosenthal again. He goes across the line from acting half, looks for the support, couldn't find one on that occasion. However, defensive knockdown, so six more for the French team on the line. Not sure what's going on here, a little bit of a conversation between the referee and one of the Hong Kong players who's been Go on. sent to the sin bin. So not quite sure what that call was for, but the player now has to come to the end of the field and is out of the game until the referees deem they should be re-entered, but the French let that one go. That was sloppy play with the extra player, the advantage of the player being sent to the sin bin. 
for a period of time that is unforgivable to put the ball down on the first touch. Yeah, you've got to take those chances when they are presented to you. There's not too many times throughout games where you get the one person overlap. In Hong Kong, they're attacking the French line. One person down. They've only got five on the field with the player in the box. And, they, geez, they almost scored a touchdown. France, they've got to make... They've got to take a full advantage of this now. Get down the other field at the other end of the field and try to get that touchdown while there's one less player. Again, a little bit of confusion. Some communication here between the referee and the teams. Oh, they've... So there must have had too many players on the field. So I think there might have been confusion. They've got a player in the bin at the moment. A Hong Kong team must have sent another player on to replace her. Getting confused that she's actually in the sim bin. And I'm not too sure if they're getting confused with the fourth sub. But they must have put their sixth player back on. As a result, they march back up the field where that player enters. You see Rosenfield this time going across and throwing the long ball out. As you explained that, Scotty, my apologies for cutting in, but that was a good opportunity from the French team to take the advantage. However, the ball goes to ground. Yeah, as you were saying, we saw the referee run down the field and bring the players down there with him, and that's often what that signals, an incorrect substitution. So they went across to just be in front of the Hong Kong defensive uh, substitute area. And that indicates to us that there were too many players on the field. So just a little bit of confusion around that player being sent to the sin bin. But that's understandable in these conditions. Yeah, it's still in the sin bin at the moment. That's Yuan, who we've mentioned a couple of times through the match with her defence. But she gave away the penalty on the occasion. Yuan, she's still in the in-goal area. So they're still playing with five here, Hong Kong. But they're going to get a penalty. So th every... Extra time that they've got the football is time off the clock and Yuan's actually making her way back to the substitution box now so they've got the full complement back on the field. That was sloppy play there from the number 11 from France. Anthony Gauguin came right through the ruck area. Just lumbered through the ruck area and gave the penalty away. So sets up the Hong Kong team with a full complement of players once again. Close to the line. Let's see what they can do here. So good speed around the play the ball. Thought that man could have gone through the defensive line himself, but another penalty. So a full set of six, five out from the French defensive line. The Hong Kong players will just set themselves up, asking what they should do here. Is it a tap? Is it a roll ball? But now we're back in play. Little step. There's that ball off the ground again. But the defensive players are on the spot. Referee telling the Hong Kong team they're onside, so a touch call. And the ball goes to ground. So good defensive pressure from the French on that occasion. Takes away any opportunity of the Hong Kong attackers. Yeah, no one's been able to successfully crack the other side's defence at the moment. Still locked up. There hasn't been a touchdown in the second half. But the French, they'll be looking to rectify the last few minutes where they weren't able to put Hong Kong to the sword when they had one less player on the field. Yeah, just having a look at the attack there from the Hong Kong team, there didn't didn't seem to be a lot of options taken. Once or twice where they had that little crack with a just a dish off the ground, that short pass off the ground. When it's not working, you've got to move that ball. Get it away from the area. Take it to the fringes and then reset. We need to move the defensive players around. On that occasion, there was no real application of pressure from the Hong Kong attackers. Back with the football now. They got a, a penalty. You couldn't quite see what it was for, but they got marched up the field, Hong Kong, so a few more touches here. They're going to be right on the attacking zone of the French. They're doing that now, this footwork, again, still causing issues for France. Last touch now here for the Hong Kong team. Just asking what the count was, so it's going to have to boil down to some individual play here. Gets that one away. My apologies, it wasn't the last touch. The referee indicated, so I'm not sure what that was all about. There's the changeover now for the French team. Yeah, it might be just uh, the different refereeing styles that we're seeing from a around the world, because I actually noticed that myself in the previous set. The referee does put his hand up. He might be indicating just four fingers instead of five. It looks like the players are receiving the message anyway. There's no confusion amongst them at the moment. 
But uh, again, Hong Kong, they just couldn't get over the, the uh, try line there on that last raid either. That, that's the bonus of the players being on the field with the referees and not uh, commentating by correspondents from the distance that we are here. So apologies for any confusion that we may have over the, uh, the miles that we are away from the, the playing area. Hong Kong again. This has been a real back and, back and forth battle between the two teams. Touchdowns were free-flowing in the first half, but both sides are finding it really hard to get it on the scoreboard here in the second half. They're going back and forth up the other end of the field, and they're not getting any value at the moment by Hong Kong. They're driving in again here nicely. Yeah, another, another change over there. So the French are doing well working the ball down the field. It's their... Uh, they're not taking the most of their opportunities when they get down there. So let's see what they can do on this occasion. Working towards their sub box. So fresh legs have come onto the field there. Number five, Maxime Poirier around the ball. He is quite quick. Here we go into dummy half now. He's taken off the left-hand side. Set up and overlap. If they can get it there, they've done well on that occasion. Beautiful set up from that man Poirier around the ruck area. A nice ball as he changed direction. Took it out to the overlap. And great skills from the link player to find the winger unmarked who goes over to yeah. take the lead for the French team. That was better from France. Nice moving up through the field and just a nice run from half there. They summed it up perfectly, created the overlap on their left-hand side. And it's a good finish as well. It's quite hard to get that final pass away when the wing defence is really getting up and shooting into you. But they summed it up perfectly, got it in the corner. Yeah, some nice play from the French team. Talked about them getting down there on the last few occasions, but that time they pulled the right ring. And the number five, Poirier, was the one that dropped the ball when they had the extra man. So he's atoned for that with a beautiful setup for the French touchdown. Hong Kong again. They'll need to level up if they can hit. Oh, a beautiful pass. Away. Hey, the skills there. That little pass off the ground. Just the no-look pass, picked it up, dished off to a man, hitting a hole. That's all it takes, just going straight at pace. And the nice dive over try to strike back for the Hong Kong team. Beautifully done. Well, that's what was working for them so well in the first half is when they were driving in nicely and getting those balls off the deck nice and quick. They can use their footwork speed and agility from that point to try to create the touchdown. And again, it causes havoc. It's funny how it goes, isn't it? We didn't get a touchdown for so long. France score one and Hong Kong just come back and hit him back on the score line straight away. Yeah, that's often a danger time. It's talked about quite a bit. There it is again. After a touchdown scored, you have to regroup in defense. You've got to protect your own line. And this time around, no team's done that. So another touchdown for France. Again, that little setup work around the ruck area, short pass off the ground, the speed of the play, the retreating defenders not back in time, and another great touchdown for the French. Oh, we're into a shootout now. The teams, they, uh, they've got the sniff of what it takes to get the touchdowns again. Let's see if Hong Kong can get themselves into this shootout as well. There's France, Hong Kong, France scored again. It could be the difference here if they go, one team goes back to back and gets the extended lead. That could be all it takes in a game this tight. Both teams really working hard. Bringing the, bringing the ladies into the middle now. So nice setup from the Hong Kong team here. Looking to go wider. There's a dive over back on the inside. But great defense. Two men around that diving player. Shut it down nicely. The number seven coming in to squeeze down Alexandra Hubert. So he did well to just give a little bit of extra pressure from the outside and makes a touch there to shut it down. So great defense from the French. Can they work it all the way down the field and do that double up score that we talked about? Yeah, that was good work from France. Probably one of their biggest defensive sets of the match. Try to stop the flow of the touchdowns occurring. But yeah, you may mention really well here, Adam, if they can get up with a two touchdown lead and that might go the right way for them to secure the match. No one has been in front by Here's more than one. Here's the opportunity now, Scott. He's acting half, goes across the line, looks for the support player. Unmarked. Referee right on the spot, calls a penalty on that occasion. So touch must have been affected. It would have been playing advantage from when the acting half went across the line. So a nice call from the referee. French with a full set of six now. This is a big opportunity to take that two touchdown lead we talked about and would be the only time in the game where a team has led by more than one touchdown. 
But a hard touch there, so another penalty this time for the French. We see the individual going over, it looks for the dive. Referee waits to see what happens, a collision in the play there, but the player back to her feet, so she's ready to go. Yeah, they just tapped in and went for the line on that occasion. We've seen a couple of touchdowns throughout the tournament where that's occurred. I think the defence just not expecting players to do that, particularly on the first tap when they've got six touches attacking the line. So almost caught napping there as well. They go the left to right bomb and the referee has given another penalty away. So Hong Kong not moving forward. They're getting a little bit frustrated. The Defenders from the Hong Kong team as well in the middle. Three back-to-back -back penalties. Yeah, it's tough down there when you pe continue penalties. This is Poirier again around the ball, the number five. He was the one that set up from acting half last time. So he's dangerous in that area. Let's see what they can do there. Working in tandem with Damien Alexandre. Here he is, Poirier. Back to Alexandre, who goes for the dive over. The referee's right there. Touch being claimed and given, so no touchdown that time for France. They so t same two guys trying to work, but there we see where it wasn't coming off for them. They took a little bit wider, reset. Here's Poirier for the dive over. Once again, the referee on the spot calls a touchdown, but that was nice enterprising play. It wasn't working in the middle. They took it to one side, tried to regroup and bring it back in. On that occasion, it didn't work, but we'll look for that going forward. Here we go, another overlap. There's Poirier, touch once again. So great defence from the Hong Kong. They hold tight after back-to-back -back penalties. Yeah, good ball movement there. If they could just get that extra pop pass, there was a sweeper coming around or a rapper coming around on that occasion. If the ball could have been popped up there for the French, they would have had an overlap on the left-hand side for sure. But they held the ball, and that's the next best thing to finish your set off down the other end of the field. They're also working hard in defence. Now Hong Kong finding it tough to get off their own line. So France working beautifully in defence. Hong Kong just up to the halfway line now. Most teams would look to be five to ten out by the time they get the end of their touch count. So Hong Kong have been able to do that now. Nice long ball, but that one goes to ground. But it was a good change up there for the Hong Kong team. They look to be stagnated close to their own line, but they were able to work their way out from deep within their own territory. So well done to the Hong Kong team. But France still with that one touchdown lead. Just around about five minutes remaining in this match. So times are getting tight. Hong Kong will want to do something with the ball as we see the French lose possession. Just some clunky play around the acting half. A little bit sloppy from the man coming in, the number 16. That is Mayel Pin. And that uh, doesn't quite work for the French team. So Hong Kong back on the attack. Yeah, alarm bells now for France. They caught a little bit earlier that... The it was probably one of the most important defensive sets a few minutes ago for France, but this one is there as well. Hong Kong, yeah, desperate to try to level the match back up here. And one of the players, he looks like he picked up a, an injury there. Sudnam Lee, he was just hobbling, might be a little ankle injury. They've replaced him now, and again, right footstep here, and they've turned the ball over. They couldn't hold on to that one, so France again, they still hold out down this end of the field. Yeah, some nice play there that uh, went unnoticed from Hugh Lam Choi for Hong Kong, the young lady as she dived over in the attempt to score. That was some great skill and athleticism to take control of that ball, but unluckily for her team, didn't get the touchdown. But uh, we'll keep an eye on her. She's uh, looked enterprising right throughout the game as we see the French work their way back up to the halfway line. A little bit of a hot step there from Louis Bourra. Good penetration here from the French. Very direct play right down the field, but that was not square. The roll ball, the referee indicating that you weren't squared up when you rolled the ball, so a penalty against the French. Well, there's more confusion out here amongst both teams. I think they you know, just sent Hong Kong back to the mark, but uh, it was better from the French on that occasion. We actually haven't really seen them go too direct with their, with their rucking, but they got good momentum on that previous set. They couldn't capitalise, though. Hong Kong back on the attack. Yeah, we talk about the confusion out there. There is uh, some cross cultures and language uh, barriers with the referees and the players. But uh, the referee we have out there at the moment from South Africa, very expressive in his indicators. So he's trying to uh, use sign language, I guess, to uh, communicate with the players out there. So uh, it's entertaining watching his singles. Uh, the hard touch, the offside, but very uh, explanatory towards the team. So entertaining to watch as we see Hong Kong on the attack. There's that short pass, a wrapping play, extra man, but nice squeeze, shut down from the defence. Marie Rabarin for the French team, jamming in. 
Penalty given, but that was good defensive effort. She had to be there to stop that one. Yeah, offside was the call. And the referee again, just urging the French to move forward. They're still in front by one. The French, it's 7-6 on the scoreboard. Hong Kong on the attack again. Do they look to go short? They do. They run straight into a wall. There's heavy contact there. And we've got the player Ma down. Louis Bougre there may have picked up an injury. He looks in a world of pain. Could have taken a collision on the knee. So there's no timeout. This is crucial. Just over two minutes to go in the match. The Hong Kong team will want to bring the game back into attack. But player welfare is the utmost concern. So with a player injured in the scoreline, the game cannot recommence until he is able to be moved from the field or retake his position in the defensive line. But the pain that the young man's in, I'm not sure that uh, he'll be retaking any position anytime soon. Yeah, still down on the ground at the moment. The referee is just having a check. They, they picked him up. Looks like a, a leg injury. He's uh, hop, skipping and a jumping his way in the in goal area. But uh, yeah, it doesn't look good, unfortunately. But the play is commencing now in Hong Kong. They've still got a couple of more touches to try to get a touchdown here to level it up. Oh, they've turned it over, Adzi. They had a three-on-one overlap with that wrapping play coming around. The man with the ball probably should have taken a better option by just maybe a step out of acting half. Just trying to set himself up, but uh, pulled the wrong rein there and didn't come off for his team. Hopefully the uh, young Frenchman, as he makes his way around to the interchange area, gets looked after. Just appeared to be a leg-on-leg -leg contact. Um, but just watching him now, he's actually jogging back from the position, so that injury seems to have sorted itself out. So we see them go on the attack. There's a long ball out of the winger. Nice defensive coverage from the Hong Kong team, and they need to be there. This is the last touch. Under a minute remaining now, so they have it all to do. The Hong Kong, they need to shut down France here. And they need to get the ball in their hands quickly and into play. Yeah, they're switching around. Yeah, and they throw the ball away. If they managed to get a touchdown on that occasion, the French would have been game, set and match for sure. But they just leave the door slightly ajar here for Hong Kong. But time might be against them. They've got to get down the other end of the field. 30 seconds remaining. I can see the Hong Kong coaches just willing his team up the paddock, telling them they need to keep the play going. They can't slow down here. Penalty given through the ruck area. So now Hong Kong... 20, 15 seconds remaining. Full set of six. That's a good drive. That's great space. Acting half should go from here. Acting half will probably need to run. Break through the line. This is it. This will be their last play. Here's the Huda in the background. Oh. Doesn't get the ball down in time, but a penalty is given, so they'll get one more opportunity. This is it for the Hong Kong team. They need to score. The game's not over when a penalty is given. So this is the final play. The French getting up in defensive pressure. Hand over the top. Good defence from the French. Takes that one down. Hong Kong lose the game by one touchdown. Congratulations to France. Fantastic effort in both attack and defence. And there it was. The French mixed opens defeating Hong Kong. Oh, the French. What a match that was. They get up by one. Hong Kong had a chance there right at the death. And they got the penalty as well. They needed to look to run straight away, but they were just trying to throw it amongst themselves. The French just flooded. They got up and made the touch. So it is France who win this mixed open round robin game against Hong Kong. The final score is France 7, Hong Kong 6.